Every time the laser cutter is on, you have a weird urge to just swipe your hand under it really quick. So what would happen? Would you get burned? Would it cut your fingers off? Or would you be fine? Today, we're putting that curiosity to the test. Using ballistics gel and drumsticks, we're going to simulate the effects of laser exposure on flesh and bone. From quick passes to full power deep slicing, we'll see just how dangerous a laser can be. Oh, that looks painful. But first, before we dive into testing the hand, we wanna see just how powerful this laser really is. We'll start with some lighter materials to warm things up and then move on to tougher, meatier stuff. This way we'll get a feel for the laser's limits before we go full on with the hand simulation. So here's the laser itself. This is a 40 watt laser made by Creality. It's called the Falcon 2 Pro. It's really great for a lot of different projects. It can easily cut wood, acrylic, leather, and it can engrave almost anything. They sent us this laser to do this video, but we told them that we didn't want to do any actual DIY projects, we just wanted to try using it dangerously wrong. Shockingly, they agreed. Thanks, Reality. So go check out some other YouTube videos if you'd like a better look at the serious projects you can use this laser for. And speaking of using things dangerously... Oh, that knife is really sharp. That hurt it really bad. All better. Everyone comment, thank you, Natalie. I made Daniel an awesome present. He's gonna love it. Let's go give it to him. Daniel, I made you a present. <laughs> <That's> Thanks. <laughs> All right, so we have our hand here. It obviously has no flesh. So the ballistics gel is heating up. We're gonna get back to that. But first things first, we gotta kind of familiarize ourselves with this laser cutter because I've never used one before and I don't know how it works. What better way to do that than to use a baguette? What'd you just call me? A baguette? Oh! Oh, it just barely fits. <laughs> now the idea here is that we can cut it and toast it simultaneously. This bread has a tough crust, but the inside is pretty light and fluffy. So we thought as long as we get through the top part, it should get through to the bottom. Also, we were nervous and didn't want to film with the lid open and risk burning our eyes or our camera sensors. So these first few shots are a little crusty, but we figured it out by the end. It's not quite all the way through. Do we need to do a second pass? <laughs> oh, it totally toasted it. It sure did. That's totally toasted, brother. Here, let's put that back and try and finish the job, eh? We need to cook, Jesse. I wish you could smell the fumes coming off the things we're cutting. Obviously, this isn't what this laser cutter is designed for, and we didn't buy an air filter, so just imagine toast that's completely burned and smells like you're actively getting cancer. Blah, that's cut and toasted. It's not quite, but it's close enough. Wow, what a treat. That looks perfectly toasted. Oh no, don't eat it. Mmm, so good. Ah, oh, that tastes so bad. <laughs> well, the bread actually cut a lot nicer than I was expecting, and while it was a bit burnt, it didn't look half bad, but the taste was definitely a deal breaker. It was actually disgusting. Now I need to prep some ballistic gel and get it melting for the hand test. Uh, yeah. Okay, while this is heating up, we can go do some other tests and see what this laser cutter can do. There's tons of videos out there of these laser rust removal tools that just magically make rust disappear. But those cost as much as a car. So will this work for the same purpose at a fraction of the price? Here I have a rusty piece of metal. This is a good one because you can see it's got some thinner rust, but it's got some really thick caked on stuff there. Oh, that's hefty. It looks like it worked pretty well. There's just some leftover residue, probably because the rust is like so heavily caked on. That actually worked really well. You could definitely use this as a rust remover. All right, I wanna see if I can make myself a bag of chips from a potato. We cut it, we burn it, it fries itself simultaneously. I see no way this could go wrong. I'm gonna have a nice bag of crisps. I maxed out the 40 watt laser and had the speed set low and it cut right through. However, the chip quality was definitely questionable. <laughs> it looks like a rubber band. <laughs> wow, I wonder if it went all the way through. <laughs> that stinks. Ooh, that's a weird smell. Not quite. You ever make those shrunken heads out of a potato? <laughs> oh dear. Oh yes, let's take a bite, shall we? Oh, that looks nice and crispy. Don't, don't eat that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to eat this one. Well, that chip was completely burned and raw at the same time. It had absolutely no crunch and I wasn't about to taste test it. Let's move on to the bacon. That might cook a little nicer. Okay, the bacon will be interesting because it's a nice mix of meat and fat. So it'll get a nice, holy crap, this piece is long. It'll get a nice... <laughs> <laughs> we wanna make some crispy, tasty bacon in seconds. We've got the laser set to full power and the speed turned really high. 
I'm going to have the laser zigzag across the bacon and see if it cooks while giving it all a nice sear. This is just as messy as cooking bacon on the stove and unfortunately doesn't smell nearly as good. Oh, that's feeling nice and cooked right there. Yeah, it feels a little more dry and I guess cooked than the rest, so it kind of worked. The bacon worked out pretty well, but I want to see what kind of damage the laser will do to some thicker meat. If it can cut through an inch of steak, it can definitely cut you. Steak doesn't have skin and bone, but we'll test that next. This will give us a good baseline to start out with. This is just good old fashioned flesh. I can't tell if this footage is gonna be really, really crusty or just a little bit crusty, because I can see it. I'm watching it on my watch. It's really sizzling in there though. Yeah, I hear it crackling in there. Look at the juices coming off the steak as it burns. The fat is being liquefied instantly and even turning into vapor. This was definitely the messiest cut we did. Watching this laser burn straight through this meat was kind of mesmerizing, but also kind of terrifying. Let's see how she did. Oh, it worked. It got all the way. Oh, and it like shrunk a little because meat shrinks as it cooks because of the water content coming out of it. Oh. That actually cut like really well. Oh. Wow, it's actually really nicely seared. Yeah, what? That's like perfect. We really treated this A5 Wagyu to a good cooking job. Oh look, it's like cooked all through here. Oh, that's totally well done. Like, yeah, <laughs> that is really interesting. <laughs> hey Lois, remember that one time I got turned into a steak? That steak was perfectly cooked where we cut it. So let's see if we can get that same result on the whole thing. Everyone's got their perfect method for cooking steak, but we might be onto something with the signature laser sear, TN. This is how you cook steaks in the year 2035. Oh my goodness, that actually looks perfect. <laughs> Might not have cut all the way through, I mean, but. It only do, oh wow, no really way. Well cut. Look really at well. that. Should I eat this? Oh, let Let's me. The other side. That actually looks pretty yummy. I mean, this is like, hang on. Uh... All right, enough messing around. Let's get to the reason you all clicked on this video, the hand swiping test. We'll put the ballistics gel hand and the drumstick next to each other so we can see the difference between the two. Rather than swiping the hand on a laser that's standing still, we'll move the laser quickly over the hands. Then we'll progressively get slower to see how slow you have to go to cut through a finger. It's not really a matter of if, but when. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Bentley. I hate my job. <laughs> the boy who lived. Now, what I did in the past was I stuck a bunch of drumsticks into a glove and it looked like a hand. Show the footage. This looks just like my hand, too. But we don't want the glove interfering, so we're just gonna do a drumstick. Now, the reason a drumstick is good is because, as you can see, it's got skin on there, it's got bones, it's got meat, it's got tendons, it's got the whole deal. So this is basically a real human hand, except it's a real chicken hand. Now we're gonna put the ballistics gel and the chicken leg in there, side by side. Look, look, it's basically identical. Look at the thumb. It's, this is basically a chicken leg. Me when I'm in a coping competition. We're gonna do the same tests to both because this is a little more realistic and I kind of just want to see what happens to the ballistics gel. So for this first test, it's gonna be at engraving speed. So not cutting speed, so engraving speed, it's a little lighter and faster. The drumstick got a very light burn that's almost too light to see, but the gel hand was interesting. The light passed through the gel and burned the skeleton underneath. Let's try that again, but slower. So this is about a third the speed of the last one, so let's see how much more damage it does. The ballistic gel looked rather stunning in the iPhone footage. That gave it a real burn that would probably require a hospital trip. It also made the skin shrink, probably because it boiled the moisture out, which is kind of terrifying. So you can see a tiny line right there that damaged the surface, but the bone is a lot more burnt. Let's do the next test on the pointer finger so we have a clean slate. This is gonna be half as fast as the steak cutting, so that's how you know it's slow. Watch this bubble pop. There's definitely some vaporization going on here. But the drumstick looks like it's getting cut through pretty well. Oh dear. <laughs> oh man. Oh, ouch, Charlie. Oh man, that fully went through skin, flesh, and bone, and tendon. Wait, did it go through bone? Yeah. Here, should I break it so we get it? Ooh. It looks like the bone stopped the laser from going all the way through, but the bone marrow was completely burnt. 
The really slow test melted the gel and turned it black. Thanks again to Creality for sponsoring the video. This is actually a really awesome device and we'll definitely be using it more in the future for various cutting and engraving projects. Check out their Black Friday sale using the link in the description. We came to the store to get things to cut. Imagine a Dodge Ram with a low taper fade. <laughs> Please sorkscribe.